last several months of our year and uh, preparing for the new year and looking forward to what we can do to have a great uh, end of the year. Ephesians chapter 1, and uh, look with me down in verse number 15. Wherefore, <clears throat> excuse me, verse number 15, wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. I like that. He, they heard of their faith. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus the Fa Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, they may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, sent him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Thank you, Father, for the truths that we're going to learn tonight. Uh, Lord, I do pray for the moments that we have together around your precious word, Lord, that you would just stir our hearts, convict us where conviction is needed. Uh, Lord, this, this topic is certainly a very um, difficult topic to consistently live out in our Christian lives, but it's such a vital topic that is essential to our spiritual well-being, uh, to our steadfastness, as well as still st uh, spiritual well-being and strength of others, uh, Lord, that are depending upon us to intercede on their behalf. Bless now tonight, Lord, and all that's said and done in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Be seated. In Sunday school, uh, we've been going through um, a series of, of lessons about being steadfast. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're doing the alphabet. We're going through the alphabet A through Z. And uh, last uh, week or so, we've been on the letter P uh, with the emphasis on prayer. And uh, tonight, I wanted to bring us in the, the moments that we have together uh, something that's a little bit different than where we were in Sunday school, but still that same topic that's so important of us. Uh, many of us have questions about prayer. And uh, we even wonder at times if we're really even accomplishing anything in our prayers. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest tools that Satan uses if he can keep us from praying, praying is one of the most powerful tools and weapons that you and I have against the adversary, the devil. We saw in the armor of God this morning where it says, and praying always. And uh, God said, I want you to be a people of prayer, not just a time that's set aside to prayer. We want to have a, a prayer time. If you don't have a prayer time and set aside a time, you probably won't do it. You'll be inconsistent at best in regards to your prayers. But God said, I want you to be a, a prayer, have a prayer life. Many times he says, he said, pray without ceasing. I want you to always be in an attitude of prayer. You know, if we're in an attitude of prayer, and a mindset of prayer, we're less likely to be angry, irritable, critical, uh, sarcastic, uh, you know, we're much more vulnerable to, less, less vulnerable to temptation that comes our way. But so often we, we reserve prayer just for Sunday and, uh, or maybe just for a limited time around the house, your walk with God time. But prayer ought to be a part of our everyday, all day, throughout the day life. You're driving, you're praying. You know, the Bible talks about as you go and taking your kids, when you, see, you go this way, you talk about the Lord. You're always thinking and talking about how good and awesome God is. But often there's a lot of questions about prayer. If our prayers are even accomplishing anything for God, uh, is it worth even, even the purpose and the time to pray? Why doesn't God seem to answer our, our prayers the way we would like Him to answer them? And I mentioned uh, before that God always answers prayer. He always, sometimes I don't like the answer, but He always answers prayer. And uh, He says yes, no, or He says not now. Once you do, I'll, I'll answer a little bit later. He wants to grow us and strengthen us and prepare us for when that answer is there. And uh, there's been times that we've set aside uh, praying for one another, praying for family, for their health, fasting, praying, and uh, just begging God to do the miraculous. And for whatever reason, God chooses to not answer the prayer the way we would like it answered. And if we're not careful, uh, we can become very uh, disillusioned and a little disappointed in the way God answered the prayer 
and feel like, well, what good is praying doing? It doesn't do any good. Uh, it doesn't even get what I wanted. Uh, but we got what God wanted. And we want to always pray, not my will, but thy will be done. God's will and our Savior in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed that prayer. And so as we look at prayer, Paul's teaching on prayer uh, may not answer all of our questions as we'll look at a few of the things here in this verse, but it does provide practical direction on how to pray prayers that can make an eternal difference in the lives of others, your life and my life as well. I've, I must pray, not necessarily because you need me to pray for you, but I must pray because you need me to pray for you because as I pray for you, that praying is going to help me more as the prayer than the one I'm praying for. And it's going to keep my heart tender and sensitive and pliable uh, to the things of God and helping you and ministering to you. And so it's so important for you to pray uh, for your sake for your tenderness of heart, for your c connection with God in those areas. And so as we look at our, our verses here in uh, um, Ephesians chapter number 1, uh, let's look at the beginning, we'll break it down a little bit in verse number 15. Uh, we're talking about the prayer for knowledge and power and strength. So it says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, notice now, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now, we pass out a prayer page, a prayer sheet each month. Uh, we give prayer requests throughout the month, throughout the, you know, each time we gather together on a Wednesday night or in Sunday school. And God, and Paul's telling the church here at Ephesus, I want you to know, I've heard of your faith. I've heard of your walk with God. I've heard of your growth and the progress you're making in your Christian life. I want to just let you know that in my prayer time, I'm praying for you, and I'm also thanking God for you. And I think it would be a, a great uh, help for our praying for each other if in praying for each other we would thank God for each other and we begin to look around and and, and the, the sacrifice sometimes it takes and we understand we come to church because it's God and we want to please God but uh, there's always an inconvenience to come to church some drive many many miles to come to church we know Sister Coleman and Miss Michelle and others they'll drive in men Brother Bronson now coming in many many miles to, to come to church and put in that time and that effort and then staying throughout the afternoon to be able to be back in church tonight and uh, you know it's important on a regular basis as you pray for people thank God for those people the impact of their lives on the cause of Christ how God's using them to be a blessing to you how God's using them to be a blessing to others and just say Lord thank you for their love thank you for their sacrifice thank you for their faithfulness thank you for their teachable spirit thank you for their love for you and for their love for me or your family thank you God for all that you've done through them to us and uh, be thankful when's the last time now we'll pr we'll thank people in person we ought to do that but how consistently do you pray thankful prayers on behalf of others and uh, every one of us should be thanking God for those that God's placed in our life. This is our church family. And uh, we're blessed to have people from all different backgrounds, all different uh, heritages and you know, uh, nationalities and race and all types of backgrounds. And God's brought us all together for a purpose. And God says, I want you to be appreciative and thankful for those of us together that we can serve together and uh, love God together. And then he says, I'm always praying for you. And uh, you know, one of the greatest uh, ways we can encourage and bless and be a support and a help to others uh, and to keep them in the race. I wonder if some that have strayed away, I wonder if some that have dropped the ball and, and no longer have a heart for God, I wonder if some that, that uh, have walked away from God, they're no longer the work of the ministry, I wonder had we prayed for them more consistently, more specifically, uh, and more urgently if they'd still be in the race. I don't know, and we may never know until we get to heaven, but I do think it's maybe something we're missing in, uh, you know, we often pray for each other uh, when it's almost at the, you know, some tragedy, some tragic event, some, some urgent prayer request, and we want to lift each other up, going through a hard time, you've got some worries and fears and, and upcoming surgeries and things, we want those type of prayers, but what's wrong with praying for each other uh, when necessarily there's nothing uh, that's urgent in their lives to pray for, but just praying for them that they'll stay, Lord, keep their heart right with you, and Lord, help their little marriage, they're trying to raise their kids right, and Lord, keep them on the right path, and Lord, bind Satan. You understand? 
understand that Satan's attacking everyone. And it's not just you he's attacking. Sometimes we get so focused on, oh, the devil's sure bombarding me. He's sure attacking me. He's sure trying to discourage me. He's trying to do this thing. If he's doing that to you, think how much more he's doing that to everybody else. You're not the only one Satan's worried about. You're not the only marriage that Satan's trying to destroy. You're not the only one that Satan's attacking. And so knowing that, even if everyone's life seems to be going well, at this stage of their life, there's not big, you know, urgent prayer requests, uh, tragic prayer requests, you can know for sure they're under spiritual attack. And uh, there's a lot of onslaught of Satan trying to bombard them, discourage them, and we need to lift each other up in prayer and uh, looking at folks and, and uh, helping them. As we see new converts, Jose is back tonight, and I called him Juan this morning, but Jose and is back tonight. His brother Juan got saved, Jose is back tonight. But uh, he's a new Christian, just got saved uh, a week or so ago. And uh, as we begin to pray, we pray, dear Lord, help uh, Jose. And, and uh, this week, as he begins the, his new journey in Christ as a babe in Christ, and help him to grow. And Lord, give him a, an appetite for the things of God. And give him an understanding of those things in your word as he reads the Bible. And help me to be able to be an encouragement and strength to them. And, and so we look at each other, we pray for each other. And that helps our love for each other to grow. And uh, how shall they know we're his disciples? For the love we have one for another. Don't tell me that you love me. And don't, me, don't I tell you that I love you. And I don't take time to pray for you. The greatest expression of love and the greatest words of support you can give to someone is I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I prayed for you just a moment ago. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having a, uh, in your text and using it in a very productive way. And you prayed for someone. And you just text and say, Brother Nick, I want to let you know, I just finished praying for you uh, today. Appreciate your faithfulness and your love for God. And uh, have a wonderful day. Something as simple as that, and we don't do that. And, and I'm, I'm as guilty as any of us. And uh, those are, we pray for each other, but what's wrong with sharing that thought and saying, I prayed for you today. I just finished praying for you. And that's what Paul uh, was saying here. He said, I, I want to let you know that I don't cease to give thanks for you, making mention in my prayers. That little word, cease not. That means there's never a time. I'm not thinking about you and praying for you. Not just I pray for you once a month or once a week. He says you're always on my mind. And I, I try to use this, and this has helped me, uh, and God uses this to, uh, if God wakes me up at nighttime, oftentimes there'll be a name. There'll be several people's name uh, that God will place in my heart. At that moment, I'll begin to lift up prayer. God woke me up, and I prayed for Brother Larry this week. And, and Lord, help Brother Larry. And it's late at night, and he's probably sleeping or whatever else. But Lord, encourage him. He just recently lost his wife. And, and, and Lord, I, I know that he's a good man, and, but I know he's uh, getting bombarded by Satan. Lord, I don't know what he's going through, but you woke me up tonight to pray for Brother Larry. And so, we, and so names will come across your mind. Don't just roll over, go to bed. Take a few moments. Uh, my wife, uh, she had gotten up uh, this week, and... And uh, it was, uh, and I, of course, I rolled over and went right back to sleep. I knew she had gotten up, uh, but uh, I didn't feel compelled to pray at that moment. And uh, she got back in bed a little bit later. And, and the next morning, I, I said, uh, honey, I said, I saw you got up. You, you feeling okay? And of course, she's on some of her treatment things. And so I thought maybe that was some of the stuff she was going through. She says, you know, God just woke me up and just uh, wanted me to pray. And uh, she said, I just began to pray for some folks and, and uh, just prayed a couple, two, three hours for folks uh, in the chair and, and uh, just, just praying that God would, would guide and direct and give healing and strength and courage, and, you know, all the different things. Boy, that's love that we can express. And God, and, and so other things we can use. Trigger. So if you see someone that works a certain job, I see Terminator, not Terminator, but uh, Exterminator, Exterminator vehicles, uh, all the Terminator, Exterminator, uh, all over the place. And not necessarily his, sometimes I'll see uh, Brother Church's uh, truck, uh, you know the name, label he works for, but most times I don't, but I see a lot of those type of pest you know, control type uh, trucks and vehicles, and whenever I see one, I'll pray for Brother Church. I'll pray for him and his wife and him and the family and, and his dad's salvation and things that we, that we know that, you know, they're a little bit more personal than what I'm praying about for him. And so I'll pray for that. And, and, and same thing in all the different areas, what kind of car you drive. Uh, or, uh, uh, you know, if I see those big buses around, there, there's a lot of them. And, uh, you know, it's sort of like uh, you don't know how much there is of something until you, it's like you get braces. Everybody's got braces. You know, you get a, a crutch, you know, a cast in your leg. You find out, man, 
everybody's got a crutch on. You, know, you get your glasses for the first time, you look, everybody's got glasses. And you didn't notice them before. But the same thing, well, you see those buses. And those big buses are going this way and that way around town. That's all. Say, brother, dear Lord, boy, help Brother Pennington. Give him safety on the road today. Protect him. Keep him alert as he drives. And the uh, Lord bless his, him and his dear wife. And Lord, give him the desires of the heart. Keep him healthy. Keep him strong. Bless her kids, little Michael and Annabelle. Help her to sing on key and uh, be able to do good on that. But, uh, you know, just things that you have little triggers that you pray for each other. And uh, as one another as you go through. And so find little things that remind you of someone. Lift them up. Lift them up uh, in prayer. And thank God for them. Pray for them. And in every day, every day, and not being selfish, but every day, you need to lift up your pastor and his wife and their family and your prayers and uh, asking God for wisdom and guidance and love and, and uh, direction and all. You need to lift us up in prayer. Because as we lift each other, it's like, you know, you raise the water, all boats rise, you know. And so it's, we're not about, I'm going to tear you down to build me up. If I tear you down, I, I'll hurt myself. So prayer is a way that we build each other up and encourage and strengthen uh, one another. And it's so, so very important. And so Paul's teaching on prayer uh, is, is vital for us. He said, I'm always in an attitude of praying for each other and uh, ceasing not to give uh, thanks and uh, praying for you. Think of the next verse. And then what's he say? There's a semicolon there. So he's, there's, a, there's a thought process that's continuing. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, thought still continues, colon, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is, his, what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in, this, uh, inheritance in the saints. So the prayers that he's praying for these Christians, these believers, uh, is maybe not the prayers that we're thinking of. He's not praying for help them as they go in for surgery. Though there's, that's good. We pray for each other. And the uh, Lord help this person over there having financial problems. Pray for those. But what, what Paul's praying for is, is in relation to their walk with God. And uh, how often are you praying for others' walk with God? And I mean praying as a husband. Well, you need to pray for your wives. Walk with God. To put up with you. Amen. To put up with me, my wife. And the uh, Lord help her to walk with God. And uh, to be able to, and as a wife, pray for your husband. You want a spiritual leader. You want someone that's guiding and leading your life. Pray for your husband. Dear Lord, help my husband. Lord, help him to, as he walks with you, to have an understanding and wisdom and enlightenment and a revelation. And that's what these words are that God uses here. Uh, where he says in verse number, uh, the spirit of what? Giving you the spirit of wisdom. All right, and wisdom is doing what God would do in any given situation. And so we don't want earthly wisdom. We want heavenly. We want divine. We want spiritual wisdom. And so pray for others that they'd have wisdom, uh, divine insight from God. And uh, how many wrong decisions wreck good lives? All good lives are wrecked by wrong decisions. And, and so it's in, it's, it's in our due diligence to pray for each other or give them wisdom. And uh, so, as I mentioned in the past, so if a job promotion comes up, or give them wisdom to know if that's a promotion that would be beneficial for them to take, and, and give them wisdom concerning that, you know, help them to know and have insight. The word revelation, which is the next word he's praying for. Lord, give them wisdom, give them revelation in the knowledge of him. And so the word revelation means what? Unveiling. A revealing. It's like a big statue that's covered with a, a sheet, and we're going to pull back the veil, pull back the curtain at some, you know, uh, commemorative event at a park or something, and we're going to reveal this this uh, statue. And so the revelation, the unveiling, is that statue being visual. Uh, it's not something that's that's hidden and unknown. It's just something that that's not a, you're not aware of because you're not exposed to it yet. So God says, give revelation of what to know God. To know God. Lord, help them to know you. Help them to know how much you love them. Help them to know uh, how much you hate that sin that they're involved in their life and how that grieves the, the, your heart and grieves your spirit. And God, help them to know, uh, Lord, that you have a purpose for their life and they're just sort of going through the motions and seem like they're just sort of stagnant. Lord, help them to know you've got a purpose for their life. And Lord, help them to know. And so you're talking about praying for them. Praying what? God, that they have wisdom, but also that they would know the knowledge of God. 
and that they know that God's on their side, that God's proud of them. Uh, often, much of my praying is, uh, Lord, help, help uh, 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 Sister McCarroll know that you're so proud of her, and uh, help her to know that her stand for you is, is, is uh, pleasing to you, and, and uh, the sacrifice she makes to do right, and, and sometimes the ridicule she receives, sometimes even from her own family for doing right, but Lord, help her to know that you are so proud of her. And, uh, and so what's that? You're praying for the knowledge, for the wisdom uh, of, the, uh, of the knowledge of Him, and that God uh, knows the good you're doing. That they know the effort you're putting forth. That God knows the time you're putting forth. And if we pray for each other, this, so our prayer, our prayer page doesn't, doesn't highlight this, does it? Our prayer page talks about, uh, you know, pray for uh, so-and-so gets saved. Or pray for, uh, you know, someone's health uh, illnesses and, and uh, things of that nature. We're praying for, uh, you know, all the different things we have on our prayer page. Uh, we've got to pray for health, pray for salvation, other prayer requests, unspoken prayer requests, all these things. But none of the prayer, prayer mentions we have in our prayer requests is about, Lord, Praying for wisdom for each other. Praying for them to have a revelation of the knowledge of God. And to know uh, God as they read their Bible. Lord, this week, come alive. And uh, Lord, be real to them through your word. Help them to sense your presence in a very special way. Help them to know that you're with them, that you're not leaving them and forsaking them. They feel lonely. They feel abandoned. They feel discouraged. Lord, encourage them. Help them to know. And so you're, you're praying. Uh, those, those are lifeline prayers. I don't know what you're going through, but God does. And uh, we will never go wrong praying this kind of prayer, these kind of prayers uh, as we pray for each other. So we're, it's cease not, he says. I'm going to always be in constant attitude of prayer, knowing that we're all under spiritual, spiritual attack. If you're trying to do right, you're under attack. Uh, discouragement, depression, uh, 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 you know, loneliness. Uh, you know, we can go on hundreds of different things. You're under attack. And so we know that. And so just because we have a smile on our face, just because we're here in church and praise the Lord and amen and sing our songs, and we ought to, but there's still a burden that we all have. There's still concerns that we have. And uh, by lifting each other uh, up in prayer for wisdom and that revelation and, and, and knowledge of Him. Notice now verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. And so God's saying, help the people to, to, to see what you're doing in their lives. You know, sometimes we, we look at our lives and we don't see God moving. And we don't see God working. God always is working. God always is working in our lives. He's often working behind the scenes. But sometimes it's fun to be able to see what God's doing. And so pray, dear Lord, I know you're working in their lives. And as, a, as an outsider looking in, we can see the progress you're making. I can look at uh, uh, Sister Lola and uh, the, the, the faith she has and, and the strength she has and, and uh, her biggest desire and uh, is, is, Pastor, I just want to be able to be faithful to church and consistent in my walk with God and my time in the Word of God. I want to really focus on that. And, uh, and so knowing that that's her focus and desire, then what do we do? Lord, help her to be enlightened and help her to see in her life what we see. Uh, you know, sometimes we look at ourselves and we don't see any change. We don't see any impact or influence we're making. And we feel like it's all waste, it's unimportant. Others looking in, we see the change. We see the improvement. We see the growth. We see all of that. And so I think it's important for us to pray and say, God, would you open and enlighten their eyes? Help them to see the progress they're making. Help them to see where they are today in relation to where they were three months ago or six months ago. Help them to see the, the testimony that they have uh, amongst their family. Help them to see, open their eyes to see the difference they're making for the cause of Christ. Open their eyes to that fact. Because Satan what wants to keep us blind to the knowledge of God, Blind to wisdom and a blind to seeing the improvement and the growth that we're making in our own lives. You're growing. Each of you, are, this has been a wonderful year for all of us. And that God is growing us. Some of us are going through a little bit more growing pains uh, this year than others. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we're, we're all growing. We're all progressing. And uh, we're all making progress. We're all at different stages and different places on our journey of, of Christ's likeness. But our desires get closer to God. And so pray, dear Lord, help them to see uh, the effort they're putting forth. Help them to see the growth and progress uh, that's being made in their life. And then, then us reassuring to them uh, as we co verbally compliment them and thank them for that. And then notice what it says going on a little bit further. Uh, then we see the what? The hope 
of his call of, of the glory uh, I'm sorry the hope of his calling let's just stop right there uh, one of the areas that we need to pray for each other is what don't let him give up hope when people give up hope they, they, they lose their purpose if I don't have a hope that maybe my dad will get saved or the hope that maybe my grandpa will get saved or the hope that God will maybe reconcile my marriage, or the hope that God will maybe bring back that prodigal son, or the hope, uh, Sister Usher, that, that a family member will come to know Christ as her Savior. And as I was uh, visiting um, uh, just the other day with Sister Usher, and uh, her eyes began to water up a little bit, she held back the tears as she shared about uh, her love and, and desire to see a family member uh, saved. And uh, her heart is so heavy and burdened and broken uh, because, because he, he's just so blinded uh, to the truth of the gospel and blinded to the things of God. And you can tell in just talking to her that her, her heart's desire uh, is to see a loved one and a family member saved. And, uh, and so she needs what? She needs hope. She needs hope. And uh, that you know what? No word goes void. And uh, the words that you spoke while he was visiting with you and the things that were conveyed to him and, and your love and example and testimony, it is not in vain. Uh, we think of uh, Brother Mason as well and as uh, such a, a faithful, wonderful man of God and, uh, but yet has a heart, a heavy heart for the salvation of a loved one and uh, his family and, and uh, has such a desire to see his family come to know Christ and uh, uh, so burdened and heavy hearted for that. Uh, you wouldn't know it as you interact with him, his love and excitement and joy uh, but there's a heaviness of heart and so what's he need to have hope hope that you know what your example is not in vain and, and your testimony uh, is not in vain and, and uh, it's being watched and they're observing that and God's working on their hearts and and God's work on their lives and don't give up and so hope for each other and uh, how often do we so as we look at our prayer page uh, we don't see a pray a pray for wisdom for each other but that, God's given us a prayer list that we ought to pray for each other. And uh, not when it's urgent. These are more urgent, I know. And uh, more, more crisis-driven or upcoming events or current events. But this is a prayer page in, uh, in Ephesians that should be on our prayer list for all of us at all times. Never not being a part of our prayer time. And so we're praying for what? Wisdom. That each other, that we'll have wisdom, decisions, make right decisions, God-focused decisions, god iron decisions, that we'd also uh, have a, a revelation or an unveiling to know, to know, to know what? That God, that one of the biggest challenges Satan fights against us is we question God's love and help people to know that God loves them. The more difficult life becomes, the more obstacles you face, the more trials you confront, the more you question God's love. That's what Satan does. If God, wisdom is in our ear. If God loves you, then why is he allowing this? If God loves you, then why why'd God take your loved one in death? And if God loves you, then why is he allowing this financial change? If God loves you, then why did he do this? And problem after problem after problem after problem. And then why is God doing this? And why is God doing this? And you begin to question God's love. And so one of the powerful prayers to pray for each other, Lord, please help Brother Anthony to know that you love him. And uh, Lord, help him to know that and not to doubt. And uh, I, I know he's got challenges he's working on. And, and I know he's trying to grow in some areas of his Christian life. And oftentimes he may be his own worst critic and beat himself up for things that he's done that, that he's disappointed himself and disappointed God. But God, Lord, help him to know you love him and you're proud of him. And, uh, and then we pray for what? Hope. We pray for hope for each other. There's a lot of us that could give up hope. You've been praying for your family for years. And you give up hope. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And so us praying for you not to give up hope may be the very thing that keeps you hanging on to hope. Brother Pacheco uh, has a, such a, a heavy heart, and I know we all do, but a heavy heart for his family and uh, loved ones and, and folks that he's concerned. And Pastor, please pray. My sister and Lord, pray, Pastor, pray for my, my brother. and pray, Lord, Pastor, pray for the young. And he's always asking for prayer. You can tell his heart's heavy. He wants them to come know Christ as their Savior. He wants them to get back in the right path. And his neighbors and, and Jose being a neighbor and says, come on, you're coming to church with me. And, and I want you to know, learn about Jesus. And, and uh, when he came, uh, he's, he was standing right there. And uh, Mark introduced me to the pastor. This is Jose. This is his first time in church. And he needs to get saved. 
and there was a way he introduced him to him. And uh, Jose, you need to get saved. Listen to this guy. And, and later that service, uh, after in the, in the courtyard, Brother Mason was able to talk to Jose, two old Navy veterans, Jose being 27, 28 years, and uh, in the Navy, old patriot, and then Brother Mason a few years less. And uh, 20 minutes later, Jose bowed his head in the courtyard, trusted Christ as Savior. And uh, but Brother Mark, a, a heavy heart and a burdened heart, and, uh, but needs to have hope that his family is going to get saved. And God is going to intervene. And God's, God does see the good that he does and uh, encouraging him. But these are, this is God's prayer list for us to pray for each other. And uh, as we outline, this is something you can highlight uh, in your own uh, Bible uh, as you pray for each other. And uh, he's praying for what? For the hope of his calling of what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What's that mean? It pays to serve God. The riches of of his inheritance. And so what you saying? As you pray for each other, pray, Lord, that they won't drop the ball and lose, the Bible talks about, their full reward. Boy, wouldn't you, wouldn't you just hate to live the Christian life for, for so long and then later in the, you, know, you sort of end up dropping the ball and walking away from it and not being as committed as you once were. And, and you may still have some reward, but you lose your full reward. And my prayer for you, I want you to get your full reward. And uh, some of us got a late start at it. We got saved later in life. And, uh, but what time we've got, I want your full reward. And not, I don't want it, but I want you to have it. And I want you to get that full reward uh, and know that, man, it pays to serve God. And at my faithfulness church, it pays to serve God. And my stand for a right, even amongst my family, it pays to serve God. And even though I get ridiculed at the job because I'm trying to do right and stand for a right, it pays to serve God. There's a reward. There's an inheritance, a rich reward. God said, now, it's not for us. It's just going to be given through us. So when God gives us that reward in heaven for our faithfulness, our dedication, commitment to Him, all the little things we've done, sowing those good seeds of kindness and things, God gives us that, and then we in turn give it back to Him as an expression of God, I love you, and thank you for saving me, and thank you for your blessings on my life, and we give that back. And so God says, don't let them miss that great reward that, and so many times we watch Christians, uh, they'll fight the battle and they raise their family upright and they serve God and they come to uh, later years in life and, and they get slack and lackadaisical and they drop the ball and, and go off the, the right track and, and they lose what they so fought for for so long and they lose that. And so us praying for each other, Lord, help them to know it pays to do right. Help them to know that. And to help them to know that it pays to do right. And uh, Lord, help them to be encouraged. And know it does pay to do right. Sometimes as a parent, you might think, boy, it's expensive putting our kids in a Christian school. And, and uh, you know, it's just hard. And it's putting a strain on us and, and things. But both as we pray for each other, those parents who have kids in school, Lord, help them to know, boy, their investment in their kids is not in vain. And uh, what they're doing is such a wonderful investment in their children's future, spirituality, and their walk with God, and their usability to God. Lord, help them to know it's, it's good. And uh, Lord, it's worth it. It's worth doing right. And it's worth the investment of getting your kids under a good, godly, and uh, Bible environment and uh, education. And so praying in this way uh, for each other. And then it goes on, and uh, what is the exceeding greatness of his power, does word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And uh, this is another great thing to add to our praying for each other. Lord, would you please show them how amazingly powerful that you are. Let them see your power. Uh, you know, as a church, there's a prayer we ought to have uh, that, that everything's wonderful and marvelous in thine eyes. So when people look at Lighthouse Baptist Church, they say, wow, it wasn't what the people did. Look what God did. Look what God did. The power of God. Your life being changed. It's not your determination or willpower. It's the power of God that's at work in your life. And God says, I want, you to, I want the people of God to experience the greatness and the exceeding power of God's mightiness in their life. And, and Lord, help them to know that they have power to be victorious over that sin. And Lord, help them not to be pulled down by that stronghold in their life. Help them to get victory over that sin. Help them tap into your power and not to live in their power of the flesh and the power of their strength in themselves. But Lord, to find strength in you power in God. God, help them to know how powerful you are. See, if, you, if people know the power of God, they don't walk in worry. They don't walk in fear. They don't walk in anxiety. And why? Because 
they got God on their side. It's sort of like the little kid that gets beat up by the, the bully at school all the time. But all of a sudden, when one of the big kids in school is standing behind him and he knows he's there, all of a sudden this gives courage to the little kid that was always getting beat up for his lunch, mate, because now he knows he's got the big guy in the back of him to protect him. And we need to pray for each other. Lord, help him to know that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Lord, help him to know that he can do all, she can do all things through Christ. Help them to know that nothing's impossible with God. Lord, help them to know how powerful that you are in their lives. Help them to experience your power and to see some miracles in their life. I pray regularly for you to experience the miracle working power in your life. And, that, and he does it all the time. But to be, be enlightened and to see that miracle working power in your life. Uh, where you can say, Pastor, I just want to share, God just is amazing. How God worked it. That's why I gave that little example of, you know, the gas, the, the bus was broken down. Uh, we were, the, you know, the transmission, whatever it was. Uh, no, the, the start, the, um, what was that, Nathan, that was not working right? Water pump, uh, wake up up there. Okay, good. And uh, the sound guy. And so uh, the water pump wasn't working. So we went to a different spot, a different location. That spot, we saw several souls saved. Folks came to church. And, and uh, what was I doing about that? That was a miracle. Power of God at work. And uh, even though we were sort of got a di distraction, a detour, it wasn't a distraction with God. God said, I want you to know, this is a miracle of God. When you have a family member come to church, family member gets saved, that's a miracle. A miracle. And uh, God, look, we want others to experience the power of God in their life. We serve an all-powerful God. See, I don't want you just to know the God, of, uh, uh, the, the God that was powerful for Daniel. I don't want you just to know the God, uh, uh, just God was powerful for uh, uh, Shadrach, Meteo, and Abednego. I don't want you to know just a God that was a powerful God for Joseph and Abraham and Moses. Part of the Red Sea. I want you to know the power of God in your life of what God's doing in your life. And so if we could testify, well, I want to share about God's power at work in my life. And I want you to experience that. I want you to know about God's power uh, because that will give you courage to overcome discouragement. It will give you uh, boldness to overcome your fear and anxiety. It will overcome all of those negative emotions when you know of the power of God. Because why? If God be for us, there's nothing that can be against us. God's on our side. God and you are in a, major, a majority. And uh, your family may be against you. Uh, your co-workers may be against you. Uh, the world may be against us. But God's on our side. And uh, we're in the power of God. Let me hurry up. And uh, this time. So what is the exceeding grace? Which is wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and sent him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things of church. And so we see here, he's seated at the right hand of God. And uh, what's that mean? Lord, would you help them to know that you're watching out for them, that they're not going through this journey alone. Your ever-present presence is with them as they journey in this life. And God is seated, interceding on our behalf. He's interceding on your behalf. And uh, you're not, nothing comes into your life that hasn't first passed through the sovereign hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's on the right hand of God. And uh, whatever is allowed in Lord, so Lord, please help them to know that what they're going through right now, it, it's a hard, hard road that they have to, to toil. It's a big hill they got to climb. This is a big burden they have to carry. But Lord, help them to know that what they're going through has, has passed through your hands, your sovereign providential hands, and that you're overseeing this and guiding them and that you're going to work all things together for good because they love you. And, uh, Lord, they want to please you with their life. And, uh, Lord, help them to know that you're there to intercede on their behalf. See, the only way we have access to God is through Jesus Christ, that shed blood and that forgiveness of Christ. And then he talks about the church, which is an important part of uh, where the folks of the prayer is, have put all things under feet, gave him uh, to be ahead of all, all things the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So the church, the local New Testament assembly, not the universal invisible church, but the local visible church. So Lighthouse Baptist Church is the body of Christ. Other like-minded churches like ourselves are the body of Christ. The head of our church is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
we then make up the body, the members, some's an arm, some's a hands, you know, we're all parts of the body of Christ. We're all to contribute for the functioning purpose of that body of Christ. And so what's that mean? We all need each other. We're in the body. You didn't realize you needed that toe until that toe got an ingrown toenail. You didn't realize you needed that wrist until that, it seems like everything you're working on now affects that wrist. You didn't know the value of that. And so, Lord, as you pray, Lord, would you help uh, Brother, Brother Bronson to know that, that we need him. Lord, help him to know he's a vital part of our church family. Lord, help him to know that he's essential. And uh, the Welsh family, Lord, help him to know, dear God, please, that they're an integral part of our church and their faithfulness and their steadfastness and their example and testimony. Lord, we need them. Help them to know they're needed. And so what are you doing? We've just looked at a prayer list. Not this printed out on a paper with pray for this and pray for that, but this is a prayer list that God gives in a few verses. Paul trying to encourage the church at Ephesus. Here's how I want you to pray for each other. This I want you, it has nothing to do with monetary things has nothing to do with materialistic things, has nothing to do with shelter and food and health and clothing and all that stuff. And those are great things to pray for. We're not saying that's bad. But I'm just saying, as a praying church, praying for each other, we're a part of the body of Christ. We're all needed. We're important. There's no insignificant part of this body. You say, I can't contribute much. I don't do much. I'm old. I'm this. I'm that. No, you're vital. You're essential. You're needed. But what Satan do? He wants you to feel that you're unneeded. You're not important. Uh, you, you, you don't have any purpose. You have no significance. And so what are we supposed to do? We're to pray for each other. And God, would you let them know how, how important they are to our church? Would you let them know how much we need them? How much we missed them when they weren't in church today? Or how much uh, we missed them when they weren't in, back in, you know. We need them. Help them to know you need them, God. We need them in the work of the ministry. There's a lot of casualties. There's a lot of casualties, and uh, we need one another. And so God gives us how to pray for one another, how to pray for each other. And so we start with wisdom because decisions will, will make or break your life. And we need wisdom decisions and then revelation to know God and, and the other things that we looked at tonight. So nothing necessarily profound in the lesson tonight, but just a little outline that I wanted to felt that the Lord would have us to do this evening uh, just to know how to pray for each other. Because the, the health of our church is going to be based on us praying for each other. This way. This way. The longevity and the protection of our testimony and the walk with God is going to be based upon us praying for each other this way. Yes, pray for our list. Pray for our health and unsaved loved ones and all the things we're praying for. But this praying will keep you praying longer because it will keep you in the, the, the fight. It'll keep you in the service of God. It'll keep you on the front lines doing right. Because if you're not in the service of the king, not if, you're, if you fade away, then, then you're not able to pray. And so we want to keep all the troops in line. We want to keep them all in the right place. And it all comes down to this thing of praying for each other. Let's bow for prayer this evening. Father, we thank you.